Let's make a pop-up room inspired by the artist Roy Lichtenstein and Vincent Van Gogh. Today our focus will be folding, doing a little bit of cutting, and drawing and designing our room. This is a two-day project, and next week we'll focus on adding color. So many artists have used the rooms in their homes as subjects in their artwork. Here are a few examples from the pop artist Roy Lichtenstein. Vincent van Gogh's Bedroom and Arles painting is one of the most well-known paintings in the world. Van Gogh painted his bedroom when he moved to the south of France in 1888. Van Gogh wanted people to feel relaxed and calm when viewing his bedroom painting. In 1992, over a hundred years after Van Gogh painted his bedroom, Roy Lichtenstein created his own version of Van Gogh's painting using his signature pop art style of black outlines, bold primary colors, and patterns like dots and lines. In 2020, Roy Lichtenstein's painting was adapted into a 3D room at the Modern Contemporary Museum in Amsterdam, which is in the country of the Netherlands. Let's go on a little tour inside this 3D room by Roy Lichtenstein. So what type of room will you make? It could be a bedroom, it could be a living room, a kitchen, an office. These are just some ideas. Now let's go over the directions for day one of our project. For your supplies, you will need a piece of paper, scissors, a pencil, an eraser, and a black marker for outlining. Next week, we'll focus on adding color. First, decide what kind of room you want to make. We'll start by folding our paper in half, hamburger style, and then doing a little bit of cutting to make at least one pop-up shape. This could be a bed, a table, a couch, a counter. It depends on what room you're making. Then draw your room with pencil, keeping perspective in mind, and then outline if you have time. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Before you start, make sure you have your piece of paper, a pencil, an eraser, a black marker to outline with, a pair of scissors and then for day two of this project we'll be adding color so you'll need something to add color with we're going to start out by folding our paper in half hamburger style so we're going to take the two shorter sides and fold them together so match up the corners and then make a crease in the middle next we're going to make the pop out part for our room so it's gonna look something like this when you open your paper, but you need to decide what kind of room you're going to make. So it could be like a living room, like this example. It could be a kitchen. It could be a bedroom, or it could be a different type of room. It could be real, or it could be imaginary. This could be your real bedroom, or it could be the bedroom that you wish you always had. Once you decide what kind of room you're going to make, then you need to think what the pop out in your room will be. So for this example, it's the bed. This example is the stove. This example is part of the couch. It doesn't have to be one of those three things, but decide what yours will be and where it will be in the room. So the bed here is in the middle. The stove is a little bit off to the side. The couch is definitely off to the side. It doesn't really matter where it is, but you need to make a decision because we're going to make a cut in our paper. So for this example, let's say I'm making an office. I'm going to make a desk. So make sure that you're on the creased side of your paper and you're going to draw two lines that show where you're going to cut. So here's one and two. And I'm trying to make them about the same height. 
and also not too close to the side of the paper. So at least two fingers from the side of the paper because if you cut too close to the side or the edge, your pop-out's not going to be very strong. Then I'm going to cut on that pencil line and stop where it ends and cut on the second one and stop. And then I'm going to take that part, fold it up, make a nice crease here. Then I'm going to flip my paper over, pull out that part and fold it back in the opposite direction then fold it down. Then I'm going to turn my paper around where the opening is, open it up, and I'm going to pop that piece out or up. So I'm finding that crease and I'm pulling it forward and then I'm going to make another crease just to make these parts super strong here. When I open it up, then I have this pop-up shape. Some of you have probably made a pop-up card before and you're familiar with this, but if you're not, this is how you can do it. Now I'm going to make this into a 3D desk. So I'm gonna draw on the pop-up part and then the area above the crease will be the wall. Any furniture that is against the wall, you can draw there. Anything on the floor, you can draw here. So this part will be the floor. So let's say my desk has one side that has drawers and then it has an opening where you would sit. So I could draw the drawers. Maybe it has a cabinet below. You could think about the furniture that is in your house or maybe look up a picture of the type of furniture that you're interested in drawing or the type of room and then look at what is in that room. Maybe there's a smaller drawer here. You'll also want to draw a line here to separate the floor from the wall, so on top of the crease. Then another line here to show the top of the desk and the side of the desk that's coming down. So when we bring the pop out out, we have this line here. Now I need to think about what's on the top of this desk. So maybe there's a laptop that's open. I'm going to draw it so it, it kind of goes over this creased line so it looks a little bit 3D. So then when I open it up, I can see the laptop there. So maybe something else on a desk would be a plant or a vase of flowers, maybe a picture frame on the side or a poster. I'm also going to outline the back line showing the edge of the desk against the wall. So that's how you can make a basic pop-up shape for your room. Remember that you can pick your own room to do. It could be real, it could be imaginary. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine. Think about what kinds of things are in your house at home and you can also look up pictures of different kinds of furniture or different things that might be included in a room. So if you wanted to do a kitchen, maybe look up what a kitchen looks like. bedroom that I've drawn and I started with the bed and then I drew the sheets that come down. I kind of used a wavy line there and then some straight lines to show the texture of the sheet. I'm also going to outline this line here just showing the edge of the bed so when I open it up you can see that line there. You want to work on your room flat so you're going to open up your paper and then while you're drawing you can fold it and see what it looks like 3D. Then I drew the headboard of the bed above that fold and I drew some pillows here. I tried to keep my lines curved a little bit so that they look like real pillows because a pillow's not a perfect rectangle. I'm drawing a part here in the pillow that would be kind of indented like someone was laying on it. The headboard that I have has a design on it, so I'm drawing the lines that it has, but this is my room, so yours can look different, of course, if you're doing a bedroom. And then my dog likes to lay on my bed, so of course I had to draw him there. So I started with a curve for his back, 
then another small curve for his head and two kind of U shapes for his ears that hang down. Another bigger U shape for his face, a little triangle nose, two smile lines that come out. He's sleeping so his eyes are closed. Then a half circle for each of his paws and a line underneath. Then for his back leg, I'm drawing a curved line and then his foot shape. And of course, I can't forget his big fluffy tail. So I'm drawing that that comes around. But if you are drawing a dog, think about what your dog looks like. It might not look exactly like mine. And that's basically how I drew my bed shape. I'm going to go ahead and outline the rest of this. bedroom that I made. Now let's do a living room. So a living room is where people hang out. You usually have a couch, a TV. So I drew the couch as the main focus and that's the pop out I have here. So here's how you could draw a couch if you'd like to include one. So the pop out is going to be a part of a couch called a chaise. It's the part that extends out where you could basically put your whole body on here and it's very comfortable. So for the chaise, it's gonna be the pop out and I'm going to draw the cushion that comes out. This is the front of it. Remember to also outline the bottom where the fold is. And I'm trying to keep my lines a little bit curved here as well because this is a couch. It's not a piece of wood like a desk or a cabinet, but these are cushions. So we want to show that they're made of fabric, that they're comfortable to sit on. And again, kind of like the bed, I'm drawing curved lines for the pillows on the back of the couch. I also have a blanket draped over the couch. And then the armrest on the side of the couch as well. So I used a curved line for the top, a straight vertical line down, and then a slightly curved line at the bottom. So that's the chaise part of my couch. And now I'm going to extend it onto the flat part or against the wall of my room. So I'm keeping with those slightly curved lines for the couch shape. And I want to show that the cushions are a little bit puffy, so they curve up a little bit. Remember that the pillows in the back also curve a little bit. And then here's the armrest on the side. And then I needed to add a coffee table here. So my coffee table is going to be partly on the floor because it's sitting on the floor, but then it's going to come above this floor line or the fold, and it's going to be a little bit on the wall. So I'm drawing it as an ellipse shape. This is actually supposed to be a circle coffee table, but in the view that we're in, it looks like an ellipse, or that's another word for like a long skinny oval shape. So I'm drawing it in the perspective of like being right here in the room. So I can see the table, but it doesn't look like a circle in the view that I'm in. is the couch behind it and then this part of the table here is see-through so for everything else in my room it's either going to be flat against the wall or it's going to be on the floor so I'm going to keep my paper open and draw the rest
pop-up living room. Now I'm going to show you how to do a kitchen. And in my kitchen example, I did my stove as a pop-out. So here's how I drew the stove. So this part is the top of the stove. Here's all the burners and the temperature controls and then the oven door opens up below. Also in all of your rooms, remember to outline where the floor and the wall meet. So you're going to want to outline or draw a line on the crease here, as well as the crease where the bottom of your piece of furniture is. So this line where the stove begins, this line where the side of the stove meets the top, that way I can really see that edge there. And also this line here at the top of the pop out. So here's the window on the oven door. I'm drawing a rectangle. And the handle on the oven door to open it. I also have a dish towel hanging, so that's why I'm not drawing all of the line because that dish towel is overlapping. And then I'll draw the burners on the top of the stove where you would cook your food. So I'm using a circle for each one. There's going to be four and then a rectangle shaped one in the middle. Also have a clock here most stoves have a clock it's five o'clock in my kitchen and then here is the top of the stove which is going to be on the wall and the buttons or the controls for the burners So then when I fold it, here's how my stove looks 3D. I'm going to go ahead and outline everything else here. finish drawing your room, go ahead and outline everything with a black marker if you have time today. Next week when we work on these, we'll focus on adding color in the style of Roy Lichtenstein, who is one of the artists we looked at earlier that used rooms as subjects in his paintings. I hope you had fun today creating your own pop-up room. I can't wait to see what you create. Have fun, artists!